here with Art Classes for Kids. Today, I'm joined with Lily, and I wanna welcome you to our YouTube channel. So, Lily and I are going to be doing a really cool painting project today, and it looks a little something like this. I call this a glowing silhouette painting. And I'll give you a few more details, but I'll tell you this right now. It's inspired by an, a French artist named Tarotier Maxime. And uh, we're gonna tell you what else you're gonna need to do that. Lily, do you wanna tell them what we'll need? Yeah, so the supplies that you'll need for this glowing silhouette painting are um, some acrylic paints, of course, uh, a water jar, and you'll need three different sizes of paintbrushes. You'll need a big or large paintbrush size, you'll need a medium-sized paintbrush, and a small skinny sized paintbrush. You'll also need a paint, you'll also need a paper plate for a paint palette if you don't have a paint palette. Then you'll also need paper towels, a pencil, this and um, some black construction paper. paper. Or cardstock. Yeah, or. If you happen um, to have any uh, black, black foam board, I don't know if everybody has this around their house, but I'm gonna demonstrate mine on this because then I can hold it up easier than a piece of paper. Yeah, and then also... It's optional. And these two things are optional. Um, so you could have a chalk, and this chalk will be used for when, for how we transfer our image of our silhouette onto our paper. And then also, this is optional too. This is tape if you um, can't hold your mag... Your, oh, we'll also need some magazines. Um, we'll a need few some magazines, magazines, because, magazines. You, because you'll need to get a figure to trace and transfer. Yes. And um, for your tape, if you... This is masking tape, by the way. We sell it on our website. And uh, <coughs> if you're... paper. So gather up your supplies and while you're gathering up your supplies I want to thank you for joining us today and also you might have maybe this isn't the first time you've been to our YouTube channel and maybe you've made a lot of cool art with us and if you have I'm not sure if you've sent a photo to us yet. If you have thank you because we love getting photos of our students with their finished artwork and we always reply. If you've never done it before, but you want to send us your art because we really want to see how it turned out, what should they do, Lily? Well, you can post a photo on Instagram and tag it with our classes for kids, or you can email us at kim at our classes for kids .com with your photo, and we will reply to you with what we think of your drawing or your painting or whatever you do. Yeah, and you know, this is it's starting, I can't even believe it, our seventh week making videos. For those of you at home that are still doing social distancing, you know, we where we live, if you don't know this, we live in Las Vegas, Nevada, and we are still social distancing. So uh, there hasn't been school for six weeks, now we're starting the seventh week, and uh, a lot of kids have been at home looking for stuff to do or looking for other ways to do uh, educational things that are also fun. So I know a lot of you have been tuning into our channel and we were only gonna do this a few days a week, but then people kept asking us to do it more and more. So we have been doing it more, but now we're doing it three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. We're saving Tuesday and Thursday to work on our big surprise project, which we are gonna announce uh, next week, which is got to do with summer, that's your clue. And um, gosh, what else? We wanna thank you so much for helping support our art lessons because we're bringing these same lessons to you for free. These are the same lessons we teach in our art classes that where kids come and meet with us on the weekdays or sometimes Saturday morning. And if you want to help support, uh, we do have a link uh, to our app called Kofi where you can give us a tip. Or if you want to support us in other ways, you can buy some art supplies from our website which is connected to Amazon since we're Amazon affiliates. Right? So, if you... And we have, and on there we have all the basic supplies you'll need for most of our videos on YouTube. 
Yeah, so hopefully by now you've gotten all your supplies gathered and now we're ready. Oh, but if you haven't gotten your supplies oh, uh, ready, then you can pause the video at any time if you need to. And also, if you just need to take a break while you're doing your art or if you're or if we're going too fast or slow for you, you can pause the video. Yeah, and then just push play when you're ready to join us again. So, let's get started. The first thing you need to do is get a silhouette, which is like the outline of a human figure, or any kind of, it's the Without seeing something. like their face yeah. features or their body features. Yeah, so you see this silhouette, you can tell that's a person jogging. So I'm gonna pass this big magazine to Lily. I've already looked through this fitness magazine and I found the image that I used to make this example, which was this image. And I'm just gonna tear it out of my magazine. So tear out the picture out of your magazine once you choose one. I think it's so if you haven't picture. chosen one yet, that takes a few minutes. So this yeah. is where you might wanna pause the video. Uh -oh. Okay. So once I get my image, this part right here, you're going to first make sure that your image fits on your paper. And if it doesn't, you can crop it. So mine will fit in, except I noticed my head is chopped off, but I can draw where that head would have continued. Lily's is too big for hers. So what are you gonna do, Lily? You're gonna well, make sure her head's yeah. in it, right? And then she's a little bit long. So do you wanna just let her feet come off of the bottom edge? Sure. Or her bell bottom pants? Yeah. Okay, so she's gonna position hers accordingly. So what, once you kind of make sure that's the image you want, then the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna flip over your paper. So Lily, go ahead and flip over your paper. Wait, I'm gonna make sure. You're gonna make a mark? Okay. It's where. You can always like rub it really good and then rip that paper off if you want. Do you know how to do that? Yeah. Okay, do it slowly. I'll show you the trick. You hold it down and then you just do that. Oh. Then you push it all the way across, go slow and push it right above the crease. Alrighty, so she's got hers ready. And now if you wanna know exactly where to put it left and right, you can do this. Watch this, Lil's. So I have the top down. I wanna scoot it over. If I want it to be lined up with the side, I'll tear it here again. Because hers is too big for her paper. Oh gosh, that did, this doesn't want to rip this direction. It likes to rip the other direction. Oh well, you can still see where the edge is. Yeah. Okay, so she's gonna kind of like make her smaller. We would use scissors, but we didn't even think about that this wouldn't tear smooth. So now you're gonna take your image and you're gonna take your pencil and you're going to rub all over where that image is on the back. You can rub the whole page or you can hold this up to a window and you can see through it. And then you can see exactly where you need to have pencil marks. And we'll be doing the same thing with our chalk. If you want to use chalk. Now this trick, I use this trick a lot. I, my kids even use it sometimes for homework projects because if you need to put an image on something that's not paper and you need to get it onto it, you can always transfer by tracing on top of this and then this pencil rubbing off onto the paper that you're trying to get it onto. So now I'm just getting the whole thing covered in graphite. Graphite is the Actually, pencil. I think it'll fit. Okay, cool. So, Lily, so Lily's going to use chalk instead of pencil. So go ahead and flip yours over and show them how you do that look. So you basically just do the same thing as you do with the pencil. You would try to find the body of the person. And then if you have any d chalk dust on your, on your piece of magazine, d move away your piece of black paper or foam board and you just tap it. Yeah, but do that at the very end. Yeah because then you don't keep getting all over the table. So now I'm looking at mine through the light and making sure I got the, the hand really good. Let's see, I'm holding it up to the light. I can see the edge of this. Let's 
So you get all the, these muscles in. got it all okay so now once I've drawn all over the back and I've even like crisscrossed it so I know I didn't miss any space then I put this on to my paper and I since I'm gonna hold mine up I'm going to need an extra hand so I'm going to oh, I got a barcode my thing from my oh, chalk well you can flip this whole thing over well maybe not the one thing about if you use the chalk, after the paint's dried, you can erase it off. Okay, or you can just take your finger like that and rub it off. Or, Lily, you can do this. You can take a paper towel like this, keep it dry, make sure it doesn't get wet, and rub all the chalk off before you get to transferring. Okay, there you go. Let's just get your area clean. This is really hard to draw the chalk on the magazine. I know, because it doesn't want to stick because the magazine has a coating. Okay, so I've got my figure here, and I put it in position. Now, remember I said my head was cut off, but I don't want to cut off. So I'm going to draw where this head would finish off. Then what I'm going to do now is I'm going to outline the entire figure, and I'm going to push really hard, okay? So I'm going to push really hard into it. I'll hold it up like this. Try not to tear the paper if possible. Now I can do a sneak peek before I'm finished. I'll just look and see if it's coming off. Oh, it is. So I can draw it darker because it's really light. Once I just checked to make sure it was in a good position, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to keep going. Okay, but make sure you check before you're done and that it isn't like moving into a new position. Cause then that might ruin your entire. Well, it'll just make it, uh, probably when you get to the end of outlining, it won't match up. <laughs> but you can always adjust. Okay, so I'm going all around each little finger even. Oh, my super muscular fitness guy. So now before I take it off and move it, I better check and see if I've got all the spots. Looks like I did. Now, it's gonna be hard for you to see on this camera where I drew, but I'm gonna try to draw it in dark now so that you can see it better. Okay, I'm going to hold it up a little. So hopefully you can see it. If not, you'll start to see that when you get the dots. Let's wait for Lily. Now Lily's used chalk. Her chalk is white. It's going to be lighter than this gray pencil. Let's move this stuff around. While Lily's doing the chalk, I'm going to get the paints out. So the paints that we're going to use we're definitely going to need a lot of white because if we lighten up some of the main, you know, basic primary and secondary colors, they're gonna look more lit up, like uh, the style of this art where everything glows on top of black. Oh, and also, here's another option. If you want to, uh, with your paint, when you do your dotted outline, you can either do multiple colors like this, or you could do a solid color, which I'm going to be doing with white. Yeah, we'll show you the options. So you don't have to do it with all those colors because that's, that's a little harder. But if you want the challenge, I'm going to show you how to do it. Okay, so we need some light green. And let's see, some pink. And some yellow. Okay, so I've got those colors. And Lily here, I'm gonna put in another thing of white over here. 
Okay. Getting around that hand. Are you gonna do the purse? Nope. Okay. Did you peek yet to see that things were lining up? No. Uh. So I didn't want to mess up the chop. Yeah. Kind of, yeah, that's good. And I fit out some of the feet. Okay. 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 So when you, are you almost done? Because I'll show you. A yeah, trick. I'm all the way up here. Then I just need to do up to this top part. of her head. Yeah. Okay, okay, so go done. ahead and peel this tape off carefully. It's okay if I rip the magazine. Okay, a set that aside. I could be using it. Now Lily's. At, I see her white line, but she's got a lot of this chalk dust. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take her paper to, oh, I got this one right here, I already messed up. Okay, so I'm gonna make a finger ghost. That's where I go like this and I put my finger on here, it looks like a little ghost, right? So then I'm going to wipe off some of her background chalk so that we can make out where her lines are better. Then I'll get a new area. Yeah, I got okay. it. Okay, and then when she is completely done with, finished with her painting and her all her painted dots are dry, that's when we're really gonna be able to erase the chalk dust with a regular pencil eraser. Oh, yeah, I think that's the best we yeah, can do. Yeah, wipe that real quick. Okay, so Lily's is in white. I don't know if you can see it, but at home, all that matters is that you can see your line. Okay, so now what we're going to do Oh my gosh, I have the runniest nose today because I've had like serious allergies. <laughs> okay, so what we're going to do is we've got three different size brushes. We're not going to use the hairs of the brushes, are we, Lily? No. We're using the wooden end. The so bottom. The bottom of this one's the fattest. This is in the middle and this is the skinniest or the tiniest. And then for our tiniest dots, even tinier than we're our going smallest to use brush, we're going to be using the tip of our pencil. Yes, so save that too. Okay, so get that out. Next, what we're going to do is, I'm going to start in the middle with white. So I'm taking my biggest brush and I'm dipping it in white. And all I do is dip and dot and dot and dot. You might get like four or five dots that... Yeah, um, you want to start with your biggest brush. Yeah, first. and you're putting the dots on the pencil line. So you're covering the pencil line. So, where it's should I of, start? It's kind of like beads on a thread. Yeah. And then so, that outlines your thread. Yeah, so where should I start? You can start anywhere you want. If you're doing yours all white, yeah. then you can do it anywhere you want. Okay. So go I'm ahead. I'm gonna start from the top and go to the bottom. Okay, so what you're doing is, you're making sure that you cannot fit one dot in between a dot, okay? They're that close, but they don't have to touch. And then you get dots like this. Now you don't want to have a, a little black space in the middle. So once you start getting that, that's when you redip, okay? And it works best if you kind of work fast so your paint doesn't dry. So I start out like this. Lily's going to do her entire thing in white. That's the easiest way. And it's fun and it looks cool. Or you don't have to do your entire thing in white if you're doing a solid color. You can do any color you want. I just yes. chose white. So this one here is more advanced where I had white, then I had light blue, then I had blue, then I had green, then I had light green, and I kept changing colors. This one, inspired by the artist, is actually a Nike ad. And um, the artist, uh, Tarachi Maxime is a commercial artist. If you don't know what that is, that's when somebody hires an artist who's really talented to make something specifically for them. It could be in that artist style, or it could maybe not be. Maybe the artist can do all kinds of styles. Um, for advertising, this was an advertisement. Um, or uh, this, this artist is also a photographer, so he takes a lot of his own photos and then does things to him. So this was a photo he took and then he did the style to it. So I'm gonna go all the way around mine with white. The entire thing, and then I'm gonna add the colors. So go ahead and just keep following it with your biggest uh, brush end. And you know, if you notice already, the dots are biggest right near the pencil line. And then they start getting smaller and smaller. 
the farther away from the silhouette they get. See, I'm only getting like about four dots that are really good before I gotta redip. So just do what you need to do. And this is gonna be the part that takes a long time. So just take your time. Ne you yeah, neatness counts in this project. Yeah, and if you need to pause the video for anything, don't forget to pause that video. Okay. And we're still using the biggest brush all the way around. This is sort of like a modern version of pointillism. Or yes. something. If, if you don't know what pointillism is, well, it's... Oh, you tell them? Okay, <laughs> yeah. go ahead. Let me hear what you got to say. Well, it's art made of all dots. Yes. All points. The famous painting made it out of all dots is in the Chicago Art Museum, and it's called... Sunday afternoon along the Grand Jeté, which is by George Seurat, and it is a painting of people over a hundred years ago at a park on a hill in their fancy clothes, um, and um, it's all made out of dots, and it takes up an entire wall in the museum. And uh, when you see it far away, it looks kind of photographic, but when you get close, it's all made up of little dots. It's very fascinating. So this is sort of like just using dots to create this glow. Alrighty, how's everybody dotting? Hopefully you're all, this is sort of the meditative uh, project where you just, you know, just relax and repeat the same thing over and over and don't stress out about it. Alrighty, here I'll bring it a little closer and show you some dots. A little small. So when I get into these really intricate areas like these fingers, I gotta really take my time and get all my dots on that line so that I don't lose the shape of my silhouette. So th some artists that I find their art and I want to show you uh, their art for inspiration like this uh, artist, it's now, he might not be super famous, but I love his style, and I think it's definitely worth sharing. Sometimes I'll find other artists on like YouTube or Pinterest that aren't super famous. I teach a lot about the famous ones, but there are some artists that aren't that famous yet, but they've got some really cool art. And if you ever want to learn more about any artists that we mention, you should definitely Google them, because then you get like, all kinds of images. You can learn about the history of that artist. You can find out how old they are, when they used to make their art, if they're still alive, all that kind of stuff. So just uh, getting to know more about the stuff that you're creating and what inspired them is really cool. Oh, one thing I forgot to tell you guys okay. is if you have uh, long sleeves, this is acrylic paint, so oh, yeah. it will get uh, uh if it does get on your clothes it will stay in your clothes so if you do have long sleeves roll them up and if you have long hair like me try not to get any in your in paint, the paint. <laughs> okay here's my tricky part the fingers i might have to get tinier dots right there oh there. i thought you were doing uh different colors uh, well, I'm going to do it different than that and similar to this Nike ad example where it's white all the way around the edges, but then there's colors after, you know, the Oh, outline. got you. Cool. So keep it going and we're going to wait till Lily has hers done. And hopefully you're taking your time at, at home and you're getting it really neat. So once you're done with your paint so it doesn't get all dried up and crusty, just get it wet, the end of the paintbrush, and just roll it onto your paper towel. Try to get some of the paint off. There you go. Whoa, I thought that would stay up. But you know what? I have more easels. Okay. Now I'm about halfway done. Now I just have to do the other half. Okay, Lily's about halfway done. So at home, you're probably about halfway done is my guess. So keep on dotting. Hmm. 
Looking good, Lily. I like your styling bell bottom pants you chose. Yeah. You know, it looks like those kind of lights like around a sign. Or like in a photo. Like, you know how they like can have that blurry background and then like the lights in the background oh, are yeah. kind of like this. Yeah, that's really cool. My hand got a little weird. Okay, so I'm almost done. I just got a few more dots to go. And then you'll hit the top of her head? Yep. Awesome. And hopefully, the paper. Yeah, hopefully at home you're almost done surrounding your silhouette with the first row of dots. Okay, I think I'm done. Okay, hold yours up. Just soak it if you want. Okay, check out Lily's silhouette. That's her groovy girl with her bell bottoms. Okay, so now the next part, you're still going to use the big brush. And now you're going to, I'm not gonna go all the way around, but what I show you what to do, Lily's gonna do it around her whole thing. But I'm gonna show you how to do an area and then change colors. So If I'm, you wanna do a multi-color. Yes, I'm gonna show the multi-color version and then whatever I show, you can just do this around the whole thing and have one color. So I dip back in the white. Now I'm having a second row of dots, but they're not as close together. So now they're spaced about one space, uh, one dot apart. So I so take a look at this before you. Wait, let me add and a few more. Are we more. still doing this with a big brush? We're still using the end of the big brush. So right here I've got the one row, and then I've added a second row. But now after that. And I'll do that on the other side. I'm gonna do under his arms, just like that. But I'm spacing them farther apart. Okay, so then I take my middle-sized brush, I dip it, and now I do a third row, which are smaller, and they're also spaced apart. Like that. And then I'll go to my other side, and I'll do a third row of whites and they're oh, spaced cool. apart. And then I'll go farther out and do one more row of the small ones, but now they're even farther spaced apart. And lastly, I'll take my pencil where the leg comes out, the tiny skinny part, and I'll add some teeny dots in between all those dots and out farther than those dots. And now you can see those. I'll do the same thing on this side. I already did the first row, they're so close, they're just about touching. Then the next row, they're the big size, but they're just a little farther apart than the first row. Then I go to a smaller brush, the middle brush, and I get them smaller, smaller, smaller. And then I do the same small brush, but farther, farther apart. And then I take my pencil, or my skinniest one, Oh no, I already used the skinniest one. That's as skinny as it's gonna get. And then I just add these teeny tiny ones. And there's a lot of those. Those can even be in between big ones. Pull it out here. Now, that's what Lily's gonna do around her entire thing. But for me, I'm gonna have different colors. So. Who's ready for the challenge of trying different colors? If you are first, I'm going to mix up some colors. So I don't want my colors really bright. I want them to have, be light. So it looks like there's more light coming through. So I'm taking some white off to the side and I'm going to add some turquoise to this one. So I add a little bit of turquoise, but mostly white, and I get this color. It's like a light turquoise, I better get more. So now, actually, I'm going to add a little bit more white to it. 
little dribble. Okay, and now I stir this up. That's good. One more. Alrighty, I think I got the color just where I want it. Okay, so now I'm taking the big brush and my next section below the white section is going to be my new color. So my new color is going right here and I'm doing a row kind of farther apart than the first row so they're not touching each other, they've got space between them. I'm gonna go down about six dots. Then I'm going to take the middle brush, dip it in that new color, and now do about five or six that are a little smaller. And then I'm going to take my smallest brush Dip it in here. See if I can get even smaller ones. Yep. And then I'm going to use my pencil. So the farther away from the figure I go, the tinier and the more spread out the dots become. So now, now I'm adding some tiny, tiny ones. And if I want, this is another option, I can take the smallest brush, use that color and go into those dots and have a smaller dot inside of the white dots that were on the edge. So that's the more advanced version, is adding color. Hopefully you can see the color change. So then I'll go to my next color. So maybe next I wanna have light green. So I take the end of my brush, I wipe it out, and I go and I, oh, I'm gonna make a whitish green. So I'm taking some white, adding some green, and getting like a light green. Once I mix it up and it's light enough, then I'm gonna get my big brush again. Big brush at the end, tap it, and maybe below here, and whoops, that one didn't come out so going to have some of those. Okay, now I'm going to use the middle size brush with the light green paint. Okay. And now the farther away I go, the smaller the end. So now I get the smallest brush, do some more of those. And then I take the pencil, and with the pencil, I put the tiny dots. The tiny dots are just like little sparks, or little glittery, glistening things. And, and then if I want the whites around there to have a little bit of green in the center, I take my smallest brush and I put a little green in the center. So this is the more advanced version. Lily's is, hold yourself, Lily. So she's putting her second set of dots around, but they're the big brush and they're spaced out farther. And it's looking cool. It's also, look what cool. do I do if I have a small area like then this? Then you just I can't, can't fit, fit anymore. Yeah, that's fine. You did just the right thing. Cool. Okay, so next I'm going for yellow. So yellow is a pretty light color. I'll just keep it the normal color. So I'm going to add yellow. And now I'm going to try my middle brush. And I'm going yellow, 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 yellow. Now you have to make sure you have enough paint that you squirt it out for there to be like a puddle to dip in. If it's just really flat, it's hard to get any paint to stick to your end of your brush. Okay, next I'm using my skinny So now I'm doing my medium brush. I'm done with my um, second layer of big dots, so now I'm doing my medium brush. Yeah. 
So just remember, big brush, then middle size brush, then small size brush, then pencil. So does the medium brush go in between them? Yeah. Or is it just another layer? Uh, yeah, it can be. Oh, the, the medium goes it in, between. Go in between. Yeah, it goes in between. Okay. And remember, it doesn't have to be perfect. Yeah, just put it there. You got it. Cool. And then we do do two layers of the medium also. Yes. Okay, cool. Or no, well, no one is fine. And then just go ahead and use the small one next. Cool. So now I've gotten. If you can see mine. I've got these. Now I'm going to add some yellow inside of the white big dots. So I'll do that with a big brush and I'll get yellow and I'll just go in these. So they have a little yellow glow inside of them. My medium size is like the same size as my big brush. Is it? Well, then just don't tap as hard. Or just don't do See, as much. Look. Yeah, that's all right. Here, try my medium brush. Okay, Wait. try that one. It seems the same. Okay, well, sometimes the tip's more pointy. It's fine. It? Okay, so now I've done turquoise, green, yellow. Now I'm going to try Dark blue. Oh no, I'm gonna try pink next. Okay, so I'm gonna go into, I'm gonna add, uh, I'm gonna lighten up the pink. So I'm gonna have pink and I'm gonna add white to it. So now I have a really light pink. Soak that. Okay, so I've got the pink. Sometimes when you don't have a big puddle or as big a puddle, you won't get as big of a dot. Okay, there's one little bit of that. Now I'm going to the medium brush and getting some more pink, but they're not as often. And now I need the smallest. So we're just going around and we're gonna keep going around and around until we get farther and farther away. Oh, and then I put some in the middle. Alrighty, so, so far I have that much going on on my side. You see, and if I want even more of the glow, I just use my pencil and I add more of these dots going out farther away. So yellow, I'll add a few more yellows over here. Sometimes when I'm right next to my art, it's, it's hard to see what it really looks like. I gotta kinda step back from it. Okay, let's see. Woo, we're looking glowy. Alrighty. So next I'm gonna try a light blue. I'm going to mix this white that I had on here with a little bit of blue. Get some of that paint on my brush. Okay, drying out the, make sure you always dry the end of the wooden handle before you dip it. So it doesn't, you know, get all runny. So now we're going to try blue. This time I'll put the dots in the center. Okay, and I'm going around with light blue. Okay, now I'm going to use that middle size brush. Wipe it out, get some more. Ooh, that one, I put a lot of paint on it, it came out big. There isn't a perfect exact, just you know, go with it. Know the concept that the farther away, the less the little dots. And it'll just take off and become this awesome paint. Okay. So now Lily's got two rows, but now the next row, she really, can I show on yours, Lily? Sure. So on Lily's next row, she's gonna really have to space out her dots, and she's not using the big brush anymore, just the middle size. So now she'll just go around and she'll just, woo, that one came out big. Okay, now if you mess up one thing, you can always touch it up later with a Sharpie. Oh, you or, said for me to not do a second layer of the medium. 
Well, yeah, Fresh. farther apart. Okay, so you can touch up with a Sharpie on the blast paper. Yes. So now, the middle size, we're going to do it, but only have it with space between it. Then the next row can be the tiniest Just line, like the... and it can be like even more spaced apart. And the last one. So be... for the skinniest one, after the medium brush, yeah. you're not gonna be putting it between the middle. No, but you can. But you okay. can also. You can also just have, okay, have a few that touch in. Yeah, because yeah. you don't want it to look so outliny. Okay, so keep it going now. Work at your own pace. Remember, you can pause it at any time. Lily's gonna go around with hers. I'm gonna start moving faster so that you can see what it looks like when it's done. Okay, so I've done. I've done every color. I've done, yeah, every color that I have, I've done. So I'm gonna start repeating them again. So now I'll do turquoise with white. Okay, let's mix some of that. So this artist, Tor Toratier, Maxime, he has made a lot of images with this sort of glowing silhouette. And, uh, but his athletic ones I think are really fascinating. He also does objects, like he did a diamond ring that you saw the, the ring and then the stone and it was like all glowing around it too. So um, you can do this technique to anything. done. I better go faster. Okay, so let's see. Let's do pink again. Looking good, Lily. Don't forget to add, yeah, looking good. Don't forget to add the pencil dots. Yeah, after I do this. Okay. Now she's done three layers. And as each she does each layer, they're farther and farther apart. Yeah, not doing my skinniest brush. I better hustle. The one with all the colors definitely takes more time. But it always ends up turning out great. Yep. Wow, look at mine. I think I'm gonna lay mine down for a few so that I can make it go a little faster. Okay, so. Woo, everything's falling apart. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna do some bright pink. Okay, so this is where I'm at now. I've still got to go around this arm and around the head and shoulder. So, wow, I better just pick it up my pace here. It gets easier as you go farther because you have to do less stops. Yeah. Okay, so I'm done with my fourth layer. Ooh. Now I'm doing my fifth layer. Wow, Lily's almost done. I better keep up my pace. Okay, the middle size. We are just dipping and dotting, like dipping dots. The ice cream is called dipping dots. Well, it's not really ice cream. What is it? It's like... It's like malt. Well, it's, no, it's like... It's kind of like boba, but... It's like creamy. Ooh. It's still like jello. I Both is like jello, and, and they are really small. They're like kind of air filled or water filled, fluid filled. I don't know. Air. air. It's like hmm. I think I've had it before, but it's like 
<laughs> you have to buy like amusement parks and stuff. Yeah. I've seen some at the Sandlot up here when we oh. were there. Uh, I don't, I, don't, I can't really describe them. I don't know what. I can't really describe it. Okay, I'm getting closer to being done. I'm done with my six. Ooh. Wait, no, not six layers. Wait, yeah, six layers? Yeah, like now one, you gotta add the skinny dots. Two, three, four, five, six. Ooh, hold yeah. that up. Six, six. Either six or seven. I, I can't okay. keep count. Wow, Lily's is looking good so far. Now you just have the super fine dots with the pencil? Yep. Woo! Oh, I better pick up my pace. Okay, I better start jamming. You can have some little dots in between some other size dots too. I'll do that at the end. Okay, I might be the last one done. I better just uh, not get too caught up in detail. Okay, so I'm going to do a light pink. So that's white with pink. Okay, now my little pencil -y dots. Those are the tiny ones. Oh my gosh, all I have is around the head and the shoulders, so I better hustle up. Okay, and now my tiny white dots. Okay, I've got one last color. I think I'm gonna use the turquoise. Okay, here we go. Right. So when, sometimes when I start dipping, like the closer dots I make be the big spots that I dip and then it starts getting smaller because it runs out of paint and then I just make it be the farther dots. If that makes any sense. All right, I'm down to my final dots. How are you doing, Lily? You down to your final dots? Yeah, now, well, I'm, now I'm down I'm to my now pencil just dots. Filling, I'm now just filling in my empty spots with my pencil dots and doing like some far away. Yeah, I think I should do that too. Just look for spaces that I can add some more pencil dots. As long as you made your dots get smaller, the farther away from the edge of the silhouette you did, you probably, you probably did have pretty darn awesome. Okay, I'm gonna add some white ones in, in, in between others because I'm looking at this one and there's white ones kind of in every colored section. Wow, well, it looks like you're close to being done. Yeah, just a few more dots. Dot o mania And I think I'm done. Wow, Lily, I think yours is done. Okay, and now I'm ready for the big reveal. Go. Ta -da! Ta -da! So now, this is how ours turned out. Lily's is super awesome looking, and it's only one color, and look at how cool it looks. Mine is the multicolor, which takes a little more time. It's got a different look. And you can also, um, you know, do one color. Maybe it's all yellow or blue or something like that. Wow, well, I hope you enjoyed this one. It was simple, but it was a lot of repeating the same simple move to get this masterpiece. And uh, I'd love to see how yours turned out. So remind them once again how they send us a photo. So, how you can send us a photo of your beautiful artwork. Your glowing you can, silhouette. Yes. You can post a photo on Instagram and tag it with our classes for kids, or you can email us at kimandartclassesforkids.com. And if you can join us again, I can show you what we're doing on Wednesday this week. I'll give you a sneak peek. The sneak peek is that it is a chalk pastel drawing with a bird, some dragonflies, in the branches. It's inspired by the contemporary artist named Brad Turum. And all you'll need for this will be three chalk pastels, a black, a white, and a brown. And you'll need a piece of colored paper, colored cardstock. It can be 
eight and a half by 11, like a page, or you can have a, a big sheet, 12 inches by 12 inches. So that's Wednesday, super simple supplies. Once again, three pastels, a piece of uh, colored cardstock, and you can do it with us. Or, or construction paper. Yeah, or construction paper. So, I want to thank you for joining us, oh my gosh, to make this awesome glowing silhouette. And uh, what should they do, Lily, so they can find out more about our classes? Well, you can like, subscribe, and click the notifications button if you haven't done it already, so you can know when all of our videos are coming out, and so you can do all these really nice projects with us. Yeah, so we can't wait till you join us again. Keep making cool, cool art. art.